Let's go. Come on, do you want to stay here or do you want to move up to that? Also, I like your outfit. Thanks. Okay. I want to keep moving up. Ooh, I think I got hit. Tango down. Okay. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. What's up operators, it's Jet Desert Fox, and today we're at ACS Airsoft in Paducah, Kentucky for their annual Noob Day event. Since this game is more about having fun, I decided to wear a loadout more appropriate to that theme. The kit I am wearing is a throwback to the 1980s and 90s aesthetic with a tactical vest that has limited molly. The PTS M Tech Flux helmet is, of course, not from that era, but I did give it a retro sunset paint job complete with palm trees to go along with the theme. While putting this kit together, I wondered to myself why Airsoft wasn't more popular or mainstream in the 1990s when it first appeared in the United States. This led me down a rabbit hole of Airsoft history that I was not expecting. Most Airsoft enthusiasts will credit Ichiro Nagata as the creator of the Airsoft gun, but it's actually a culmination of world events and devoted Japanese gun hobbyists that we have to thank for this amazing sport. To understand how Airsoft guns were even thought of, we have to go way back to September 2nd, 1945. On this day aboard the USS Missouri, the Japanese government signed the Japanese Instrument of Surrender, thereby ending World War II. In 1958, Japan passed the Swords and Firearms Possession Control Law. This was to prevent gangs and hardline imperial loyalists from using guns and swords against one another and the government. This made gun ownership in Japan extremely difficult along with the complete prohibition of handguns. These are the events that set the stage for Japan's desire for replica firearms. Meanwhile, in 1960s America, a toy company in the United States called Rayline produces the first true airsoft replica. While not officially called an airsoft gun, it is a replica that fires a variant of 6mm BB. The Rayline Zebra and Zebra 2 are toy gun replicas of the Whitney Wolverine pistol. The Zebra and Zebra 2 fire what Rayline calls soft safe ammo, which is rubberized 6mm BBs. The gun is spring powered, but doesn't use a piston like conventional airsoft springers. It has no hop up and is loaded by putting BBs into a reservoir on the top of the mock slide. Velocity is around 30 feet per second, but it can fire in semi-automatic. Rayline produces the Zebra in the USA for some time, then outsources the production to China. China changes the original colors from bronze and blue to a yellow and orange to easily distinguish them from real firearms, a struggle that continues to this day. Production of the Rayline Zebras stops in the 1980s, but you can still purchase them on eBay and other hobby collector shops. Back in 1960s Japan, the desire for functioning gun replicas starts to evolve. Since real handguns had been banned, Japanese gun enthusiasts began to make model guns that when the slide was manually cocked could cycle mock bullets but didn't fire an actual projectile. This led to the creation of the Japan Model Gun Collectors Association. This organization is the genesis of a company called MGC. In 1961, a model gun engineer by the name of Tanyo Kobayashi working at MGC imports cap guns from American toy company Mattel. Since blank cartridges aren't allowed in Japan, this was the next best design. Kobayashi modifies the Mattel cap guns to function more like real guns but with fake non-firing bullets. In 1962, MGC releases the Walther VP2 with a new innovative internal slide design called Tanyo Action. 
Tanyo, or slide action, makes the slide cycle, load, and eject the cartridge when the trigger is pulled. During the 1960s into the 1990s, Japan experiences huge economic growth. The spike in wealth spawns several more model gun companies in Japan. One of those companies is Japan Arms Collection, or JAC. In 1986, JAC releases the Battlemaster. This isn't just a piece of airsoft history, but the genesis of airsoft itself. Designed by Ichiro Nagata, the JAC Battlemaster is powered by Freon silicone gas. The Freon tank could be screwed directly into the gun, or a remote line could be used. The Battlemaster has a tube magazine capacity of 30 BBs and can fire in semi-automatic and fully automatic, making it the first ever gas-powered fully automatic soft air gun. Soft air was the term used by Nagata since the Battlemaster's velocity was well below strict Japanese laws. 1986 ushers in the classic airsoft era. During this era, airsoft games known as survival game in Japan were played with all sorts of gas and spring-powered airsoft guns. In 1987, Tanyo Kobayashi releases the MGC Maxi Comp. This was MGC's first gas-powered airsoft gun and is the archetype of all modern-day high kappas. In the late 1980s, another model gun company called LS sees a business opportunity with airsoft guns. They begin to manufacture and distribute airsoft guns across the world by selling them disassembled as a kit. Purchasers would assemble the airsoft guns much like building functioning toy models, therefore avoiding any laws regarding the sale of guns. LS products eventually make their way to the United Kingdom, which is how airsoft originally made its way to the USA. It's unknown as to exactly how or who from LS in the UK connected airsoft to the US, but all documentation on the internet states that this is the predominant method. After three decades of Japan's banks lending more than the borrowers could pay back, Japan's economic bubble finally burst in 1990. Model gun companies like MGC went out of business and others like LS limped along. One company that survived this collapse was Tokyo Marui. During this period, TM was making airsoft guns, but was primarily a traditional toy company selling the likes of toy cars and dinosaur models. Unlike other model gun or airsoft companies, Tokyo Marui heavily invested into new airsoft technology and it was about to pay off. 1991 marks the end of the classic airsoft era and the beginning of the modern airsoft era when Tokyo Marui releases the FAMAS F1, the world's first automatic electric gun or AEG. The FAMAS F1 had airsoft technology that no other airsoft company had previously possessed. The most important new technology that they brought was the innovation of the hop-up unit. The hop-up unit gave the airsoft BB a backspin which greatly improved its accuracy and range using the Magnus effect. Other innovations were high-capacity wind-up magazines, tracer units, and tracer BBs, all of which were proprietary to Tokyo Marui. However, the AEG wouldn't become a big hit until later that year when TM released their famously known commercial, Marui Member, showcasing their new Colt M16A1 AEG. Airsoft sniping had also been evolving during this time. In 1993, a Japanese company called Asahi releases the M40 and M700 airsoft sniper rifles. These sniper rifles are powered by pumping air into a mock shell, then inserting a BB into it. Asahi also made a special projectile called a blade bullet, which had a tail end that matched rifling inside a custom mock shell. It was rumored that with some modifications to the gun, it would be capable of firing an actual bullet. Whether this was true or not, the Japanese government decided to act by confiscating as many M40 and M700s they could track down, then destroying them. This was one of the most famous destruction of weapons in Japan. Of the total 500 units produced, about 25 pieces survive to this day, making the Asahi M40 and M700 the holy grail of airsoft guns. By the 1990s, airsoft had established its toehold in the United States. All other airsoft companies were now copying or trying to approve upon the TM design. Yik Fun International, better known as Classic Army, out of Hong Kong had one major change. Instead of ABS plastic, Classic Army airsoft guns were made of aluminum metal. The weight and feel of a full metal airsoft replica were very desirable to many players. Throughout the 1990s into the early 2000s, Choku Amuri and Classic Army dominate the American airsoft market. So why wasn't airsoft as popular in the 1990s as it is today? One reason is that airsoft in the USA was still in its infancy. Unlike the present day, where every weapon system you could want from a pistol to a grenade launcher can be found on evic.com, airsoft gun models were limited to mainly AKs and M4s. 
Airsoft games during that time more resembled paramilitary training than a fun game with cool costumes. Another reason was due to the rise of paintball, which had been introduced in the 1980s. Paintball reached its apex in the 1990s with Speedball. Speedball is a fast-paced, highly competitive, highly commercialized, and somewhat spectator-friendly version of paintball. Paintball also had several high-profile leagues, its own World Cup, and television coverage on ESPN. Unfortunately for paintball, all the national publicity came to an end in the early 2000s after numerous accusations of corruption within its leagues, unabashed cheating, and the skyrocketing cost of paintballs. In 1998 Denmark, two engineering friends, Johnny Peterson and Henrik Grobelnik, began to distribute Airsoft in Europe. This partnership would become the Airsoft company we know today as ASG, or Action Sport Games. In the early 2000s, they would become one of the first airsoft companies to acquire licensing from real firearm companies like Armalite and Cobra to use on airsoft replicas. This allowed airsoft companies to create even more types of replicas with the correct trademarks, giving enthusiasts and collectors true one-to-one -one replicas of their favorite guns, in turn increasing the sale and popularity of airsoft around the world. Airsoft companies buying into official gun company trademarks persist to this day. By 2009, Airsoft had become more accessible and popular in the US and around the world. However, the price of a Classic Army or Tokyomori Airsoft gun had remained about the same since the 1990s. This all changed when a small distributor in Southern California called Jag Precision began to sell low-priced imported Airsoft guns from China. These airsoft guns were roughly half the cost of any other AG on the market and shot at a higher velocity, two factors which made them highly desirable to airsoft players. Sales of their Echo One line skyrocketed and fields across America were filled with the higher powered Chinese made clones. Unfortunately, JAG never obtained legitimate licensing from firearm companies and had to discontinue many of their highest selling airsoft guns. Learning from the limited success of JAG Precision, many other companies followed suit obtaining licensing from firearm companies and manufacturing low-cost airsoft guns with higher velocities. In 2011, airsoft technology changed again when an engineering and machine shop in the U.S. state of Delaware named Polarstar released its patented high-pressure air fusion engine. The fusion engine could be installed into any M4-type airsoft gun, replacing the internals of a gearbox with, essentially, an air valve. In simplistic terms, the fusion engine was a computer-controlled air valve that released a burst of high-pressurized air from a paintball tank to propel airsoft BBs. The valve is controlled by an FCU, or fire control unit, which allows the user to control the amount of air going through the valve, the firing modes, and the rate of fire. Airsoft had now come full circle back to air power, but with a computer upgrade. This trend dominated for several years before leveling out as a lot of players couldn't afford the high cost of buying a gun, then installing, or having to pay for a fusion engine to be installed. There are also more additional essential costs like purchasing a paintball tank, regulator, and remote line. After all this, players then had to pay for air tank refills. While HPA is hands down the most efficient power source for airsoft, it is also the most expensive. 2014 marks another small milestone for Airsoft when the boys at ASG out of Denmark produced the first AG outside of Asia, the Scorpion Evo. Airsoft sniping had been on the back burner of innovation until 2017 when an Austrian Airsoft YouTuber named Christoph Neuwirth, better known by his channel name, Novrich, released the SSG-24. The SSG-24 was the first improvement in airsoft sniper rifles since the Asahi M40. Unlike other models of sniper rifles which had to be upgraded with aftermarket parts to reach their full potential, the SSG-24 came fully upgraded out of the box. This resulted in a massive influx of airsoft snipers on fields across the world and airsoft sniper YouTube channels. That brings us to present day, where you will find mainstream media coverage of Airsoft, hundreds of Airsoft YouTube channels, competitive Airsoft leagues, and countless companies, websites, and retail stores selling Airsoft guns across the USA and the world. Now that we've seen where Airsoft has been and come from, we can better understand where and how we want to progress. Share this video to help educate others about Airsoft and to keep the community growing. That's going to wrap up this video, and as always, this is Jet Desert Fox, and I'll see you on the field.